Hello everyone, once again we're back with another Q&A video to celebrate reaching the milestone of 300,000 subscribers. And we are super happy and grateful for this achievement. We love our community, you guys are amazing. Mm -hmm. And all the support that you give us is like uh, is everything for us and that's why we keep traveling, we keep jumping places because of you guys. Yeah, we're only able to continue making videos and travel if people watch the videos. So yeah, it's down to you guys. So we asked people to leave us some questions on YouTube and Instagram. We got many questions, a lot of them are similar so we'll obviously only answer those once. And we're not able to answer them all because there were so many but we still selected quite a lot so gonna get into it right now. So the first one, what location have you visited to date where you felt like your photos or videos just couldn't do it justice? So we discussed this and we think that it's probably like the mountainous locations. Mm -hmm. Not just one, but many. Uh, I think uh, we would say uh, Patagonia in Argentina. Santorini. And also Santorini and Iceland, even Iceland. Any places with like height or... Uh, yeah, mountainous views because I think on the camera and photos it always makes it look small but when you're there in person you can really feel just like how big it is so mm -hmm. I say those kind of locations like Carol said it's not any specific locations just just places with I don't know big uh, big landscapes <laughs> other than the popular cities of Rio de Janeiro and London which other cities within your respective countries would you suggest we visit uh, I think in Brazil, any city, I think all the places that we visited in Brazil are amazing and we can recommend it just depends on uh, which type of things you guys like to do, if it's beaches or like uh, cute uh, cities or towns or the Amazon which is something uh, and amazing, the jungle. Yeah, jungle areas, but I don't know, I think we love everywhere that we've been in Brazil and we can recommend those places. Yeah, I don't think we've ever been to anywhere in Brazil that we haven't liked. But specifically, some places that we've liked uh, in the state of Minas Gerais, there's Ouro Preto, mm -hmm. like a really old Portuguese town. And then you have Salvador, which is the capital of Bahia. And then the beach places like Maragogi. Mm -hmm. some... In Bahia, there are many, many beach areas in Bahia. We liked Marau. And Rio de Janeiro, there are many places as well, like Ilha Grande and Parachi. Yeah, it's uh, just too many places to talk about. <laughs> yeah, and for England, uh, Carol's only been to England once with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once, and we only did London really, so she hasn't seen anything of England. And even though I was born there, I left when I was 18. And I had never really traveled that much in England. When we'd go on vacation, we'd usually travel throughout Europe or go to Brazil. So I haven't even seen much of my own country yet, which is unfortunate. Just mainly like London and Manchester where I was born. People do visit Manchester, but for me it's not that special really for uh, to travel to. I don't think so anyway, but maybe that's just because I'm from there. But we, need, we definitely need to do a proper trip around England. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're planning to do that maybe in the future, next year maybe. Yeah. Next question. You both seem so confident wherever you go, but I'd like to know what's the scariest situation you've gotten yourself into has been, if any at all. So we thought about this and we think the scariest one was in Iceland. We didn't film this because we just weren't filming at the time and it was at night. So we were going from one little village to another town at night and it was in the winter where everything was completely covered in the snow. So we were counting on having a gas station in the middle of the journey. And as we were driving, we just couldn't find the, the gas station. It wasn't where it was supposed to be on Google Maps and there was no signs or anything. And we were like running out of gas and since it's Iceland in the winter you're talking like negative uh, degrees and it really looked like we didn't have enough gas and we didn't. So as we was getting close to the town that we were going to, we ran out of gas in the middle of the road, kind of in the middle of nowhere. So we had to stop on the side of the road and start asking people for help to maybe take me to a gas station to fill up some bottles. And this just happened to be the moment that they had the northern lights going on which isn't always so no cars were stopping for us even though we were like stuck on the side of the road nobody would stop because the northern lights were were going on and yeah it was just freezing and we were just kind of scared because it was pitch black 
and it was super dangerous because other cars were coming and then uh, and then we were just stopped in the middle of the road and uh, the lights uh, started to not work anymore because the battery started to die and that was a problem of the car not our problem so uh, everything started to get worse and worse but then i think uh, two uh, guys from england from england they stopped and they helped us they were like super like lifesavers and uh, they stopped us and waited for Chris to go to the town to get gas but in the end everything turned out well um, it was scary but luckily the, those guys stopped and we could uh, get gas and then everything was fine but it was super scary yeah because the battery went out on the car there was no way to keep warm either so if it wasn't for those guys would have been in a in a lot of trouble how long does it take to edit the videos and isn't it hard to find sightseeing attractions for all of us every day? So to edit the videos I think it can be anywhere from about 4 to 6 hours for me just to edit them. Obviously the, the process of finding music and uploading to YouTube and editing a thumbnail adds on extra hours but the actual video edit I'd say it's around four to six hours. And regarding finding sightseeing attractions, that's super easy because pretty much everywhere we go, there's always so many attractions. We don't even show them all. There's always attractions that we don't go to. We don't actually go out every day. That's the thing that a lot of people ask. They think that we're constantly traveling, doing stuff every day, but we're not. Maybe in a month we might go out, what, like 10 times? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because you obviously have the travel days where we don't film or just some days we stay at home. Like the work days, we just work. We don't usually edit videos or anything on the same days that we're traveling and uh, filming videos. So yeah, there is still a lot of times where we're just in the apartment or the accommodation. Which hood did you like the most and in which country? Uh, for me, I think it's Nepali food. Mm, I love Indian food too, but I think Nepali is my favorite. Yeah, well Nepali is kind of like Indian food, but also with a Chinese influence. So you kind of get in nice food from India and stuff like dumplings and noodles from China. So I'd, I'd probably go for Nepal too. Either Nepal or, or India, my favorite. And this is one of the questions that we got asked the most about having children. What if you got a child? Will you keep travel or filming? People always ask if we are planning on having kids and at the moment we are. We always have been planning on kids and I don't really see us changing our minds. No, no. We, we still have uh, the same uh, thought about it and we want to have kids. Just one, I think, yeah. but not now. We don't know when. Maybe, yet. maybe in two years. Maybe in two years, but yeah, we keep changing our minds <laughs> about that, about when it will be time. But uh, we definitely will want to have kids. Yeah, and at the moment, we think we will want to keep traveling. I imagine at the beginning, like the first six months or the year, we might stay put somewhere while it's like a young baby. But we see other people traveling with kids now. Um, yeah, it is kind of getting more and more normal. It obviously won't be the same like we're doing now probably at the beginning and yeah, we probably won't be going on some crazy treks and stuff with the, the kid. It'll be more mellow kind of travel, but yeah, I think we will continue. We're still enjoying doing the videos too, so yeah, I think so. And this is also one of the most asked questions, which is about us settling down if we're not tired of living out of a suitcase and having to figure out so much on every trip and country, will we continue at this momentum traveling around? And also where our home base will ideally be. So there are moments that we have gotten tired of constantly traveling, but as we mentioned before, we do actually stay put sometimes more than people think. So there have been periods when we felt a bit tired and we just stopped for like a week or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, over the last months we've been trying to do that more often because I think in the beginning we didn't know when we would uh, stop or if we would have money to keep traveling so we were traveling like crazy and not uh, not resting properly but I think in the last, last year and last month we've been trying to stop more and uh, being able to work out a little bit more and just take care of our health in general and eat healthy and work out like I said. 
yeah, we've had more time to do normal things like watch series and films. Mm -hmm. Because before we would be constantly like traveling and then trying to find days to do work. But I think what we're going to do now going forward is, let's say, take two weeks off where we stay put in one, one place and all we do is work. We don't think about filming or planning any trips or doing anything. It's more like a, a nine to five in a way. And that's what we've been doing lately. So we take a week or two off. We just do editing, do stuff on Instagram, on the internet, go to the gym, watch films, just like a normal nine to five. And then once we're done with that, we travel for let's say two weeks and then we don't think so much about the working aspect. Obviously the filming, but not the computer work. And that's been much, much better. And I think we'll be doing that kind of workflow going forward. And we're not really ready to make anywhere home soon. I think that's going to come more along with when we decide to have a kid. Mm -hmm. And we also don't know where we want to stop. We, we thought about a few places, but we can't uh, decide like 100%. And I think it's okay because we, we're still traveling and maybe we'll travel to a place and we'll think, oh, this is the, the right place to be or to, to have a house. But we have a few countries in mind. Uh, we think about Portugal, Greece, Greece, Brazil maybe, but we're not sure yet. Yeah, Brazil's the easiest because we're both citizens, so we can literally just go there and not have to do any paperwork or anything. And Portugal and Greece would have been easy, but then Brexit happened and that kind of screwed me over. Before Brexit, I think I could have easily just moved to any of those countries or anywhere in Europe, but yeah, now it's not possible. So we just have to see, but we really don't we really don't know at the moment. Next question, what would you say is the most important thing you have done to be so successful on YouTube? What advice would you give other people trying to be successful vloggers? So for us, I think it's just consistency and never giving up. We've been on YouTube now since 2017. First two years we had a full-time job, so it wasn't like constantly making videos, but we were making videos. We've always been pretty consistent, especially since we've been traveling full time. I mean, we make about eight to nine videos every month and like without fail, we, we never stop. So we just kept on going even when the views drop. Because if you're on YouTube making travel videos, sometimes you might go to one country and you do really well and then you go to a different country and just people aren't interested or the algorithm didn't pick up the videos and yeah, your views just tank, money tanks and everything goes bad. So it's constantly up and down, but we've just kept going all the time and I think that's it. We just kept on going and never stopped until this day and we don't plan on stopping either. And some more advice would just be to make videos that you like making. Like we could possibly make some videos that would probably do even better on YouTube, but so we just don't really like making them. And uh, yeah, to be able to be consistent and make videos year after year, I think you have to actually enjoy the kind of videos that you're making. So yeah, we just make the kind of stuff that we want really. And I think it's also important to be authentic and creative and do something a bit different from the others uh, because Nowadays, uh, there are many people trying and sometimes they just try the exact same thing of others and sometimes that won't work. So I think you need to just be authentic and even though you might think it's not that good, you just keep trying and one day you're probably gonna get where you want it to. What do you try to keep in mind as you travel to different countries that are unlike your own? in order to enjoy yourself and appreciate other cultures. That is, you may see different food, poverty, kindness, rudeness, etc. What do you do to adapt? Yeah, I think the most important thing to, to have when you're traveling is to have an open mind because you're gonna see, like this person said, you're gonna see everything, uh, everything is different from place to place, things work different, people act different and something that you think is normal won't be normal in other places and also things that are normal in other places won't be normal to you so i think you, you need to have uh, an open mind you're obviously gonna see s things that are not nice like poverty and but you're also gonna see uh, people living in poverty but being happier than others that are more wealthy so it's kind of 
weird but uh, you're gonna see everything but for us i think the most shocking thing that we usually see is the inequality especially in southeast asia and south america latin america brazil brazil uh, i'm kind of used to that because i'm i'm from brazil but still uh, every time that i go to a place and i see it's such a such difference it's still very shocking and sad I think in a way we've kind of also got used to it because we've been jumping around from country to country so much it's kind of like you get used to the culture shocks in a way like when we first start, started traveling I think there was more of like an impact of seeing different things but it's kind of like we're used to seeing different things and we just react more normal to it now I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah I think uh, we, we had a, a post on Instagram and we talked about it like in the before we started traveling we were afraid of the culture shocks but now we kind of want to have things changing all the time like you know, one one month in a, in a country and another month in another country I think we really like to have to adapt <laughs> and things like kindness obviously we're always gonna appreciate that there are some cultures that are way friendlier than even our own countries especially places like the Philippines where everyone seems way more friendly than everywhere else and then rudeness usually with the people we don't have that many bad interactions with people one thing that usually annoys us is when we're queuing up in lines and there are some places i think in like india or even turkey i think we had issues where people just don't seem to understand lines and they're just pushing in front of you all the time so yeah that's always kind of annoying to deal with that's only one thing i can think on top of my head but I know that's something that always kind of annoys us when we're queuing up for 30 minutes and people are just going in front of us. Even though we understand that some people may not understand queues, but it's, it's still annoying for us. <laughs> yeah. What are your top ranking tropical destinations you have ever been? That's a tough one because we've been to so many. But I'd say Philippines is still number one for us that we like for beaches, waterfalls, tropical scenery. Then. Um, I don't know the actual order besides the Philippines, which is number one, but Brazil, where uh, we lived, Mexico, we like Mexico, and then in the Caribbean, places like Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. We like Curaçao as well, but that doesn't look tropical, but it is in the, the tropics, but it's kind of dry there for some reason, but that had like some of the best beaches ever. Who do you use to book travel? Do you belong to any travel club? When you travel to another country that requires an exit plane trip and you want to stay longer, what do you do? Um, we don't belong to any travel club. We usually just uh, use uh, Booking.com and Airbnb and Agoda to book our accommodations and to book our flights we usually check on momondo.com and then from the results of momondo we check on the airlines website because it's usually better to buy from the, the the airline place directly directly yeah and when we travel to a country that requires us to show proof of our onward travel which basically means you have to prove that you're going to be leaving the country what we've been doing since we started traveling is we go on expedia.com and they have a feature there where some flights have 24 hour free cancellation so it's kind of hack that we do where we book the flight and then we get sent the tickets in our email and then we cancel the flight because we don't want to get that flight and uh, yeah when we go there we just show them that ticket even though it's not even valid anymore but that's all they need to see and yeah then later on we book our um, our exit flight what ways do you two connect with one another for romantic moments or emotional intimacy while you're traveling and working so much so that kind of ties into what we mentioned before about the way that we're traveling. So before when we were constantly traveling and just trying to find time to uh, do work, work on the laptop and it was all over the place, I think we would have less time to ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some moments it was getting a bit uh, not ideal, I would say, for, for a couple. And I think we noticed that and that's also one of the reasons that we we are doing this way now, uh, more relaxed and staying more time in one place and we've been trying to like stop working at 8 p.m., 8.30 p.m. almost every day and watch uh, some series. We're watching The Last of Us now, very good series. Yeah, we've been able to watch loads of things now during this like new schedule so 
Yeah, we're never going to leave this schedule now because it's just gave us more free time to work on other stuff. So for us to have more time together, even though we're always together, right, traveling, but I mean, uh, yeah, time together without doing stuff that's related to travel. Even being able to go to like the cinema and do normal like romantic stuff like yeah, that. Date night. <laughs> yeah, date like night. <laughs> yeah, so that's been very helpful. What is a country that you both find yourselves missing all the time and thinking of returning? What is a country that neither of you ever cared to return to? Um, I think we, we think about returning to Brazil, Mexico, Greece, Philippines, which are the countries that we are always going back to, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think. And the country that we don't care to return to, uh, I, I wouldn't say a country, but I think the 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 Albania Riviera, we had a not so great experience there, but we love the Albanian Alps, so that's why I cannot say Albania, but just that area of Albania. And I would also say uh, New Delhi or the Pahaganj area, I would never go back to that place. In, in India? In India, yeah. Yeah, but there's never really been a country that we've been like, we hate that country and we never go back. We go back to pretty much everywhere that we've been. Just some specific areas, that, that's pretty much it, like Carol said. Do you have plans to visit some of Africa's best beaches in places like Mauritius, Zanzibar and Kenya? Yeah, we do, and we think that won't happen this year, but next year we want to start doing some places in Africa. We've only ever been to Egypt, I think, in Africa, but we want to do the more southern areas of Africa. And I think a lot of these parts are on the east coast where there's supposed to be like the best paradise beaches so I think next year that will be coming up. Have you ever got ill or injured in a far off country requiring medical care? What was the circumstance and the overall experience? What kind of medical insurance do you carry? We never had a super bad accident or anything but we've been to the doctor just two or three times once when you got dengue fever in Nepal and I went in El Nido when I got food poisoning. Mm, the experiences were okay, right? Um, yeah, we've mainly just gotten food poisoning over and over, but the majority of those times we just wait it out in the accommodation that we stay in and it eventually passes. You only went in El Nido because I think you weren't getting better. No, yeah, and it was like five days already, so I went to the doctor. And when I, when I went to the doctor in El Nido, the, the experience, I think, it was it was okay. Uh, I think I got to pay a bit more. <laughs> Remember, I think. Oh uh, yeah, I got charged, charged. like a, maybe a tourist price. Yeah, but other than that, everything was okay. And in Nepal too, right? It yeah, got... it was it was quick. I just went because I was just trying to confirm that I had dengue. I suspected that I had dengue because I've had dengue in uh, Brazil. But I was kind of worried that I might have something else because it's a really weird sensation when you get dengue. And the guy just confirmed I had dengue and um, that's about it really, just food poisoning and dengue. Mm -hmm. And uh, medical insurance, we use something called World Nomads. We have the link in the video description of all our videos, we use them. It's like an online travel insurance, and, mm -hmm. but we've never really had to use it properly. Like a lot of this stuff, like food poisoning, just uh, when it's a small amount, you don't really use the, the insurance. You can, but... I think we, we didn't bother. We didn't bother. It was like 10, 10 or 20 dollars. So. What do you do about getting regular physical and dental checkups while traveling? So, for physical checkups, mainly when we go back to Brazil, we go to the doctor, do blood work. I've had some like autoimmune gut issues. I've got something called uh, leaky gut syndrome. So, yeah, I've been working on that and currently completely changed my diet and stuff for that. But I was going to the doctor a lot when we were in Brazil. And for dental checkups, we never really did it. But when we were in Turkey, we went to the, the dentist and got a checkup there. Because yeah. Turkey is famous for like its dentist industry. Mm -hmm. So that was the time that we went to the dentist. Yeah, that's it. Are there any countries, regions you not ever travel to? If so, why? Um, I, I don't, I can't think of a name of a country, but I don't like to go to places where there's only me as a woman and there's only men. Um, usually I don't feel quite comfortable in that situation. 
uh, for example, when uh, we went to India in that specific area of Pahaganj in New Delhi, I wouldn't feel comfortable at all and uh, I just don't want to go to another place that's like that. Yeah, even for me it's a weird vibe, like I don't even want to go to a place where it's just all guys, but in India there was a few areas like that and I think there are probably some other countries that it's like that, so we're not really interested in going to those at all. It's just a strange energy I think. and. Yeah, I think we also don't like the fact that there's just no women around, like they're all just at their, their house and they're not allowed in the streets or something. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird to us. Where did you guys experience the wildest cultural impact? So that'll go to India too, because yeah, it's just such a densely populated place, very colourful. It just seems wild, kind of noisy, lots of traffic. Food's completely different, people are completely different. Religion's completely different, right? Hindu, so everything's completely different there. But that also adds to the experience of it being a fun place to travel to. What is the best airline and not the best you have traveled? Uh, I think the best was uh, Emirates and not the best... Um, I think that the top, uh, the Portuguese one top wasn't so good. And also the Aerolíneas Argentinas in, in Argentina because of their, their staff, we had an issue and so it was a not so good experience. Yeah, we didn't like some of the Air Asia ones in mm. Southeast Asia. Some of them are okay, but every now and again we go on like some super basic flight, even between countries. It looked like one of those planes that you go on like a half an hour flight, but you're actually on it for like four to six hours or something. Yeah. So those weren't good either, but they are like budget airlines. I always wonder, does it benefit you if we watch the ads all the way through? So from our understanding, looking online, you just have to watch 30 seconds of the ad and then that will make money for us and money for YouTube since it's like a, a split with the money. Usually just to make sure when we're watching channels that we enjoy and like watching, we just watch the ad all the way through because usually it's just like a, a minute or two, right, max? I mean, there are some other ads that are outrageous, but yeah, I think at least just watch the 30 seconds and then at least we'll get paid a little bit. This one's definitely for Carol. Uh, what products does Carol use on her amazing curls? Uh, this is always changing. The, my answer is always changing because it depends on where I am. And some places it's super hard to find uh, products for my hair. Others are not so hard. But uh, right now I'm using two, and I, I have them here. Oh. I'm using those two products. Sponsored ad. Mm, not sponsored. <laughs> and I think this one uh, I've been finding in many places in Southeast Asia. So this is my go-to product. At least to, to style my hair. And shampoo and conditioner, just normal Dove or anything that I find. <laughs> <laughs> what program do you guys use or how do you monitor your budget and spending? We don't use any specific app on our phone, only the, the bank account app and I think it, sh it shows how, how much we're spending like every, every month and it also shares like if it's, it was for food or uh, accommodations. It splits in different uh, topics so that's good. And uh, at the end of the month, I always do uh, like a spreadsheet with all the earnings that we made and also how much we spent. So that's how we control our spending. I'm wondering about your guys' flip-flops. You wear them a lot. Seeing you climb rocks and go through mud. What flip-flops do you recommend? So I don't know if we use the best flip-flops, but we used the uh, Havaianas a lot because that's like the popular Brazilian brand that everybody used in Brazil, but now even globally you can find uh, Havaianas and they usually last quite a, quite a long time, like easily over a year of using them constantly. We've also used Ipanema. Which is also another Brazilian brand, Ipanema or Ipanema. Yeah, and people always find it funny that we use them so much for stuff like trails, but I think it's because people in Brazil, especially like Rio, we're just in flip-flops all the time, so we're just used to using them on yeah. different terrains. So. Sometimes I think to Westerners that might only use them for the beach, they're like, what, are, what the hell are these guys doing? <laughs> yeah. But It's a Brazilian thing. We go to like shopping mall or even do hikes or go to the beach. Everywhere we go with the Havaianas or the flip-flops. <laughs>
How do you choose your rental stays, which apps, etc., which filters, because you guys do it last minute and you get phenomenal deals? We don't do anything special. I think we, like we said, we use Booking.com, Agoda and Airbnb. We usually check on all three uh, platforms to make sure we get the best price because sometimes there's one single single accommodation that's on all three uh, platforms but in one it will be a better deal so that's how we get some good deals sometimes and since we've been using booking.com for a lot uh, for a long time we have some sort of status and we get better deals a few discounts sometimes we get free breakfast in some places but we don't do anything special. So which camera and accessories do you guys use for vlogging? Are you guys afraid of somebody taking your camera on the streets? So the main vlogging camera is a GoPro, a small GoPro, and sometimes use the phone for B-roll, use it quite a lot, mainly when we need uh, to do zoom shots or filming in darker scenarios, because uh, the GoPro is horrible when it's dark, like it's unusable almost, so usually switch to this. And occasionally we might use Carol's Canon, she has a big Canon, but we don't usually use it that often. And we have the drone, which is a DJI Mavic Mini 3, just got the new Mavic Mini recently, so that's pretty much the setup. But the majority is just the, the GoPro overall. And regarding people taking our cameras, I don't think so. I think since we're using like the GoPro, it's so discreet walking around, and uh, yeah, it's never really worried me. And when we're using the drone, we usually go somewhere quiet, out of the way, alone. And majority of the time, people don't even know that we're flying a drone. And they don't even notice the drone because we're kind of flying high, far away. A lot of people don't even see it. So I don't remember anywhere where we've been kind of like fearful of being yeah. robbed. No, I think only like in Brazil or South America, Latin America, we just have to be careful, but not only with our camera, but with our wallet and stuff like that. But nothing like nothing extra special. Yeah. Does traveling full time ever become unstimulating? Do you ever miss the routine of a nine to five and have having your own place, going to the gym, meeting friends, etc. Mm, we sometimes miss having a routine or having ro hobbies other than filming because we are always filming. But mm, it's not like a big a big deal, but. I think we just got used to it and we obviously miss our friends and family I think that's the biggest thing that we miss uh, not being able to hang out with them but uh, we've been trying to visit our family and friends uh, at, at least once a year and we're going to Brazil soon yeah and we usually spend uh, like an extended period of yeah. time with them like the last time we were in Brazil was for like four months mm -hmm. or more more yeah. Yeah, and my parents, as you probably saw in the video, just came here for, for two months. So we actually end up spending a lot of time with them, but it's just in like a, a shorter time frame, I guess. And sometimes we are able to meet our friends while traveling. We met a few friends in Barcelona last year and also in Taiwan too. We met a friend and yeah, that's how we do to not miss them so much. How do you keep your wardrobe fresh with traveling to different countries with different climates and only using backpacks? Do you send certain items back home and then buy new things in the countries you travel to? So yeah, it's obviously not possible to pack all winter stuff and summer stuff just into our backpacks and we don't want to do that either because um, majority of the time I think we are in warmer locations. Yeah, so for the most part we do just have uh, things for warm climates, but we do always carry like thermals, uh, pants and tops. But pretty much just uh, with that stuff and a coat we can handle a lot of cold climates. Um, only not like extreme cold, then we have to have bigger jackets and I think right now those are at my parents' house. Mm -hmm. in yeah. Portugal. So basically after we did Iceland we went back to Portugal to drop off our uh, like expensive winter clothes and our thick jumpers and stuff and we left it there so we can always pick that up again if we want to go on another trip but 
we can also just buy stuff again and we'll probably be, be doing that in a few weeks time you'll you'll see in one of our next destinations what are some of the destinations we can expect in 2023 so we had many plans that just changed like two days ago we were going to south korea and japan soon but uh, we found out that uh, i need a visa to go to japan and that visa can only be obtained in my country which is brazil so i cannot get the visa from an embassy in another country i was thinking about getting it in bangkok but i cannot do that so we're not going to japan soon we still try to go this year but first i need to go to brazil and uh, i think uh, we had to change our plans so instead of going east to Japan and US, uh, I think we're going to uh, the other way around, uh, west. So you guys can expect a little bit more of Asia and then Europe. South America, South America Caribbean. Caribbean. Yeah, but we don't know specifically the countries yet because we've had to change our plans because like we said, we we're going to do like Japan, Hawaii, US and yeah this has changed everything <laughs> how do you enjoy the travel when the channel youtube takes up so much of your time editing filming planning investigation and recording so yeah we've always split a lot of it up so we usually wouldn't do the editing on days that we are out traveling and um, to be honest you can't be traveling every single day anyway so you need times when you're at home and those times usually make the most of it to do the editing but as we mentioned numerous times we have changed the way we're working now where we actually take specific time off just to work on the laptop and then the other times we're just traveling and filming but mm -hmm. filming's kind of like in the moment yeah. that we're traveling so it doesn't seem like a, a big hassle to us I think the computer work part is the part where it really feels more like work than just walking around as we're enjoying the travels yeah and i think for me the the planning part sometimes it's uh, it gets boring because you have to always uh, think about where you're going to be staying and checking all the accommodations and stuff so sometimes that's a bit boring but now with our new pace it's better for me to compared to the beginning it seems you have more money for accommodation now is that true and is it youtube money uh yes basically because in the beginning we had uh, um, we had saved money to travel and we didn't know until uh, when we would be able to keep traveling with the money and if the money would uh, just uh, run out but now since we are making money with youtube we can travel more relaxed i think and we don't need to 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 stay in all the the cheapest place all the time uh, we still try to find good deals and once in a while we may stay in a more expensive place but uh, some other days we stay, we stay in more cheap options we try to balance i think that's what we are doing we're still not at the level where we can stay at the like the most expensive ones all the time but and we don't we even don't, really want to yeah we we wouldn't want that to but i think we can balance more and we we can stay in more comfortable places yeah like a lot of the time you probably noticed uh we're just staying in apartments that we're paying around 40 to 60 dollars i think on average and that's for the both of us mainly in uh in asia but even in greece i think we was finding places like 30 forty dollars when we went there in turkey so you can find these accommodations and usually they're just like average like like the place that we're in right now it's not like some cheap run down place it's it's pretty nice so we just aim for that it's comfortable like we said we don't even really want to just spend all our time in luxury locations i don't know we get get bored eventually we usually prefer staying somewhere in the neighborhoods around the people it's more uh yeah more interesting for us I'll translate this one in English on the fly. Are you guys scared that when you stop traveling and maybe have kids that you're gonna really miss traveling? Are you scared that you might not be happy living the normal, like traditional way of living? As I mentioned before, I don't know if we have to go back to that kind of life anyway, just because we're having kids. We see people traveling with kids. But obviously, once the kids are at a certain age, you've got to decide if they're going to go to a normal school or be homeschooled. And right now, we don't really think about homeschooling. 
I don't think so. At that point, we'd have to be in a fixed location, but that'd be so, so many years from now. And I think by then we will have kind of seen almost everything that we wanted to see. I can't imagine that I'd want to be slowing down a bit by then anyway. Yeah, yeah. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. That's don't a tricky know. one. But I think we always miss something from our past. Like even now, we're having a very amazing life. But sometimes I think, oh, I miss my my friends in the U.S. or in Brazil, and oh, I miss my university time. But at the same time, I'm always like, oh, I miss when we were in Greece last year or things yeah. like that. We're always always missing something. But uh, I think we just need to be happy with what we have and that's it. Yeah, because like when we had our 9 to 5, it's not like we were completely miserable because we'd hang out with friends, we'd have hobbies, I'd play football like twice a week. That's something that I don't get to do now. So whilst traveling, we still lost other aspects that we like. It's not like you start traveling and just everything's this amazing dream and there's no negatives. There's still loads of negatives. It just depends if the pros outweigh the cons for you. We know some people that they just travel a few months and they're already ready to go back home and they don't even want more than three to six months traveling. It just varies for different people. I think maybe the fact that we're traveling together makes it easier, that mm -hmm. we don't feel lonely or anything because, yeah. yeah, we got each other. Yeah, and because we are also best friends, so when I need to tell some, like, gossip, <laughs> I tell him or show, like, a meme, a fun meme, I show him because he's my best friend. <laughs> yeah. So that was the last question. Like I said before, there were so many questions, and if we were to answer them all, the video would be, like, three hours, so we just have to select a few and I'm sure we'll do this again maybe the next milestone 400,000 subscribers if or whenever we reach that and once again just thanks for watching and supporting us all this time because this just wouldn't be possible if nobody watched our videos so we gen genuinely need you guys to watch to be able to make these videos for you in return yeah thank you guys and for all the nice comments and questions and also for your kindness as usual thank you very much <laughs> yeah a lot more videos to come we'll see you around bye bye guys thank you mm -hmm.